It's that time again, and it's the 10 year milestone on top of that. I was torn this year whether to do a full in-depth recap of my history of isekai in general, since it is a special marker, or deciding to just skim it since I did a pretty well in-depth overview in my last recap. My laziness has won out, and thus I shall give a brief summary of the last 9 years, before moving on to what's new this year. If you want a more in-depth view of my last 9 years, watch the beginning of my 9 year roundup, where the next section of this video is explained in more detail. I assume that if you're watching this, you likely have an idea of what an isekai is, but I should probably state in essence what I deem an isekai. An isekai is a story where someone or multiple people go to another real, not virtual, world. This is either another universe altogether or just another planet. Furthermore, there has to be an aspect to the story where said person or people are actively engaging in learning about how their new location differs from where they were previously. Not something like the Star Wars movies where it's mainly just set dressing. Isekais are further divided into three categories. Regular Isekai, Reverse Isekai, and Observer's Isekai. The first Isekai involves someone from a world which is essentially a mirror of our own going to another world. The second involves someone from a different world coming to a world that's a mirror to ours. And the final is someone from a world going to another, neither of which are similar to our world. I started Isekai in essence via Minecraft fanfictions which had a strong component of the mob talker mod in most if not all Minecraft SIs outright, way back in 2013. This was also the time I got into anime, and I got in right as isekai anime like The Devil is a Part-Timer, Problem Children are Coming from Another World, and Log Horizon were airing. I would in 2014 expand to manga and web novels such as Oreto Kawazu-san no Isekai Horoki and Shield Hero, but it would take me to 2015 to really start getting into translated web novel and light novel isekais. In May 2015, I would mark the start of my delve into translated novels in full, with the new gate, which was being translated by Yoraikun, and I would also learn of the English web novel site Royal Road, making my account in August. I would use Royal Road for about 6 months before deciding to focus my attention on Asian translations. I would continue the general trend of reading directly from translator sites until very early 2017, when I would learn of the site Novel Planet, which was the sister site of Kiss Anime and Kiss Manga. It basically hosted pirated novels from a lot of translator sites for Asian novels, both free and paywalled translations. It would be my go-to site that I would use for two and a half years, until I got annoyed with the quality dip of Asian isekai in general. I decided to return to Royal Road in late 2019, and primarily use that site for new isekais to read upon my realization that English original isekai are generally better quality than Japanese ones. Up until Novel Planet was shut down without warning, which I still seethe over, in May 2020 I would read both Asian translations and the English web novel community. Once Novel Planet went down, along with the takedown of Kiss Anime and Kiss Manga later that year, I would take off of anime and manga and Asian novels entirely and focus on reading English web novels. This led me full circle and got me into reading fanfictions again, though with a slightly higher standard than I had 7 years prior with the use of Space Battles and Fanfiction.net starting from May of 2020, and that was the primary thing I did, reading both English original novels and fanfiction for about a year and a half. There was sporadic times where I caught up on some manga, but besides that I really wasn't spending much time on Asian media. Only in the winter season of 2021 did I get a bit back into watching some anime, which I had stopped watching since 2017, as well as going through my manga and trying to complete those that are already done serializing, as well as glancing at some new ones. In 2022, I would split my focus between reading original English web novels on Royal Road, reading some manga and webtoons occasionally, and reading fanfiction predominantly on sites like FF, Questionable Questing, and Space Battles with a couple of anime I checked out during that year as well. I would get into AO3 during June of that year via a FF14 self-insert isekai called Help for Heidelin, which I ironically haven't read since I subbed to it. This leads to my most recent year, and what has happened since my last yearly roundup. The brief TLDR is that I read more fanfiction in general, a bit more manga, and have read less of original English isekai on Royal Road. This has been mainly due to me essentially wanting more observers isekai, and wanting to read more fanfiction involving fate in general, thus leading me to reading a decent chunk of crossovers and isekai self-inserts. Starting off with Royal Road, I had a period of like 3 or 4 times over the year where I had an itch to check out what was on Royal Road. 
This lasted up till about a couple of months ago when Royal Road implemented this new dog shit change where they removed the ability to see upvotes and downvotes on reviews due to some annoying retards who were review brigading and vote manipulating, which had put me off the site up till I started going back to get history for this video. Going from the earliest at the start of this year, to the most recent of the stories I read, we first have The Young Master, which is a multiverse sci-fi meets cultivation story. It was overall really good from what I remember of it. Unfortunately, it suffered the issue of hiatus, due to the author having both real-life job issues and also wishing to do a read-write where he plans it out more than how he did. I became a biologist in a fantasy world, had an unexpected chapter release 11 months back, which was a welcome surprise. I really wish I could recommend this series more since it was the first science isekai on Royal Road that I can remember, but the author essentially has a lot of trouble writing the story, so it updates when it updates. It's a shame since it actually is extremely detailed due to the author being an immunologist. Next is The Flying Emporium, which I read up to chapter 138. The TLDR is that I wouldn't ever recommend this story, even though I technically still have this in my follow list. The story characters feel very flat, and it's only due to the intrigue of the plot idea itself that keeps me around, which the protagonist is essentially stuck in a small plot of land with people visiting him. Next is Cosmosis, which I read up to the near end of book 3. Great abduction isekai where there is a lot of building up on the alien culture and bits that really capture the essence of exploring a new unknown world alongside an interesting mystery. Chaotic Craftsman Worships the Cube is another really good story that I love and hasn't suffered hiatus hell. If you have any inch of love for a production based MC, I highly recommend checking this out. Mage Among Superheroes is an example of an observer's isekai that doesn't disappoint. Orc Mage accidentally gets thrown into a modern superhero filled world and has to make a living. The Caretaker of Otherworldly Tenants is a Japanese light novel inspired reverse isekai where an American boy is responsible for playing the overseer of a bunch of girls, reminiscent of Monster Musume. It focuses on the character dynamics, so if you're looking for a more laid back social engagement reverse isekai, this will scratch your itch. The only complaint is that the author writes when he writes as he juggles a bunch of other novels he has. The Valenfrost Saga is an isekai with a Nordic theme, which is a pretty good summary of it. However, in the time since I read the first two volumes, the author has decided to go back and start rewriting. I may have to come back to this next year and see if the story improves from just okay to something more recommendation worthy. Elf Empire is a story I read up to the beginning of book two and it was pretty enjoyable, exactly what it says on the tin. However, how much this is due to my inexperience in reading kingdom building stories is up for debate as I've seen a couple of other reviews say there's nothing that new about it beyond following the standard very well. Stranger Than Fiction is an isekai where the protagonist is stuck with the whispers of an amoral war goddess inside his head. It's very good, with its mythological inspiration being very fresh to see in an isekai. Master, This Poor Disciple Died Again Today is a shansha where the stick is that the MC tries to master the ability to play dead, which leads to wackier shenanigans. Overall, it hits the itch of Chinese shansha without the psychopathic nonsense most protagonists in those stories propagate. Truthful Transmigration is another Chinese-inspired novel. John gets transmigrated into a young master's body, and the story is that he's honest from the beginning to the family that he replaced their son, and the story proceeds from there. It's a long time span kind of story, so there's a lot you can read, but to be frank, the story is kind of average and suffers a lot of paragraph-dense writing. Tales from the Underside, How to Maintain a Questionable System in Progress, is an isekai centered around the collections of land set up by a goddess that is inhabited by denizens who all are ranked via a janky system that the protag is responsible for. Overall decent from what I read so far, very fresh. Dungeon Life is a story of yet another man who is isekai into a dungeon core role. It actually kept me engaged with the story, which is an issue other dungeon core isekais have a lot of the time. A great read that I would point to, especially for someone who's new to dungeon core stories. Everyone's a Cat Girl is an isekai where a man is shunted to a world with several islands inhabited by, you guessed it, cat girls. I would say the protagonist can be kind of insufferable dickhead rarely, but overall the story is a decent read with nice art, deeper plot lines on issues happening in the world, and good character dynamics. Beers and Beards is a story about a guy isekai into a dwarf and realizes that the beer the dwarf drinks is utter shit, and proceeds to try and make better beer. It's a very enjoyable, laid-back story. Unrelated side note, I got introduced to a new fucking rabbit hole when I decided to google the last chapter I read to see if I could find a pirated version online, and ended up finding a fucking giantess website with a story that had an exact same chapter name and number. You have no idea how much ironic whiplash I received upon finding out that a dwarf story and a giantess story just so happened to have the exact same chapter name for their 49th chapter. 
That's without going to the fact that there's a website specifically for giantess stories that's active. Back to our regularly scheduled programming, next up is Rebirth of a Civilization, which was a crafting-centered isekai where people were seeded into a world to repopulate it. I wouldn't really recommend it, even if all the chapters hadn't been removed by the author. Jackal Among Snakes, although I haven't read it in a while, is likely one of my favorite isekais, and might even be my second favorite isekai of all time. It involves a man who's isekai into the game he played, and breadth knowledge of. It's extremely good, and I highly recommend it to anyone to get into. The world building is awesome, the character interaction enjoyable, the fight's great, overall I give it a 10 out of 10 for the 283 chapters I've read so far. The Errant Otherworlder is a short, completed satire isekai that takes an average Joe and shoves him into a low fantasy world, where his expectations are repeatedly dashed. Overall, a nice story you can read in the spare time you have in a day. Unfortunate Transmigrator is a story where the protagonist has a near-death experience and awakens past life memories, which leads him to realizing that he's in a cultivation world plagued with tropes. Tropes he comes to realize have a more guiding hand behind them than first expected. Unfortunately, the author is currently in rewriting, with the story on hiatus until about mid-December, or January 2024 at the latest. Once it comes back though, I will be returning to it, and recommend anyone else to put a tab on it for the future. All the dust that falls is a Roomba isekai. It's unironically good. Japan wishes they could do stupid appliance isekai as well as this. A budding scientist in a fantasy world is a science slash experiment based isekai with Alice as our protag. However, it takes a bit for the science to get going as she focuses on surviving, and then learning in this new world she finds herself in. Overall, very good. The Laws of Cultivation, key equals MC squared, is another story with a science-themed focus, but this time in a Shansha world. Overall, it's pretty decent, but it waxes and wanes with its science theme at times. Saintless Summons Skeletons is a tale where a girl who is training to be a necromancer ends up gaining a saint class, creating a hybrid holy undead build. To be frank, I remember little of this beyond the fact that she breaks out from the church, and the fact that I don't have this followed makes me think I didn't like this very much. Heretical Fishing, a cozy guide to annoying the cults, outsmarting the fish, and alienating oneself. Talk about a long name. But don't let the name fool you, this is actually a really good laid-back isekai novel. One where fishing and eating seafood is seen as bad fortune, so when the MC starts going to town on the fish, he faces resistance. Horizon of War, the realistic isekai chronicles, is as it sounds on the tin, a war-focused isekai with its grounding set in realism. The protag has no special powers, and has to do his best to survive in a medieval equivalent as essentially a peasant. If you want a story with no cheats, this is the one you're looking for. The Last Ray of Hope is an isekai with the theme of past lives. I'm kind of meh on the story. While I plan to get back to it, I can't say it's that interesting as of now. Perhaps if you are specifically looking for female MCs. Rise of a Manor Lord is a manor theme focused isekai where the main plot point is that the people in this world, besides our protagonist, can't lie, which he proceeds to abuse the hell out of in order to gain an advantage. Pretty good. Dark Lord of the Farmstead is a tale where our MC gets dropped into the body of a Dark Lord, and proceeds to book it out of there at all due haste due to not wanting to get killed by fanatic followers of the man he replaced. He falls into a simple life of farmsteading. Overall, pretty decent with good art on occasion. Otherworldly is an isekai involving our protagonist Yunora Dawn, where she gains memories of a past life which cause her to realize how shit her situation is in general, which pushes her to try and find some reason to keep going. I enjoy the kind of dread-induced contemplation this story has, and have no real negatives that I recall about it. The Lone Hero, Cyber Deceptive, is an isekai where the MC is pummeled to death and sent to a dystopian shithole where humanity has been enslaved and driven into hiding by other races. The story is, to be blunt, pretty dog shit, with little world building or description of where the characters are, and calling them characters is being generous a lot of the time. Not recommended to say the least unless you are like 14 and new to reading in general. Dao of the Web is another shansha that I got into because of a hook involving the idea of introducing social media slash internet type of connection to a cultivation society. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out to have that, and combined that with a just passable world and story so far, I put it off. Turns out it now has a rewrite, and seems to have higher praise than before, so I'll have to take another look to see what changed. Transcending Dreams is a Shan show where the protag gains a system. From what I remember, it was enjoyable, but some people may dislike the MC's passive nature and how he handles things. 
The black spot was an isekai where the MC gained a black spot that marked him disappearing, only to find that he was in another world where he got taken in by a new family. It didn't really have much that made it stand out beyond the world having a progressive stance, and it seemed to have gone on hiatus after my review essentially calling it mid. One More Plow is an isekai where a man gets punted into the body of a minotaur, a species known for a bloodthirsty love of fighting, and basically bails and seeks to find a small place to settle down to have a peaceful life of farming. The story revolves around him getting into farming and dealing with neighbors and a bit of a mysterious plot that happens in the area he resides in. Overall, a pretty good isekai. Definite recommend for anyone interested in primarily laid back with some action here and there. Unbound Soul was something I finally went and finished after not having touched it for a couple of years. I had previously had it among my recommendations last year. That was a mistake on my part. The story suffered from both vapid world building and character interaction, on top of both cringe and unlikable decisions by the main protagonist. While I would recommend the prequel to the story, I would not in good regard recommend Unbound Soul, as its only real drawing point is the main plot point surrounding the world's law. Sexy Sect Babes is the story of a rough miner from a hyper-capitalist spacefaring future who got transported into another dimension due to a teleporter mishap. He has to contend in a world where female dominance is prominent in the form of cultivators. Overall, a pretty enjoyable read with good character interaction, one that might be enticing to those looking for more grayer MCs. Sexy Space Babes is a series written by the same author that came before Sect Babes, involving an MC who's thrown into a forced conscription of the Empire that came to dominate the Earth, and the story takes place among a handful of locations. It's a pretty good read, if you like Sect Babes, you will likely like this one, and vice versa. Taming Destiny is a story where the MC is given the opportunity to inherit the power of a taming class from another universe. The catch is that he has to survive in a wilderness-infested world for a year before he gets to the actual world where he will take the mantle. Overall, a really nice survival-type story with a slow-paced taming focus that I would recommend to anyone interested in that. I will admit that it's still up in the air whether or not the transition from pure wilderness to what is expected to be some Victorian fantasy world will be done well, though, when it comes. So perhaps it might be better to wait and see if it's done well before getting invested into the story. The final story that I read from Royal Road this year is Modern Patriarch, a story involving a cultivator who gains past life memories from a time on Earth, which leads him to an epiphany that the cultivator lands he lives on is being held back from its cruel crab in a bucket mentality, and uses his influence and power to seek to change that. A good story with a relatively niche focus on social upheaval in a Shansha setting that I would recommend taking a glance at. There are a few stories that have been stubbed, essentially the majority of their chapter taken down with volumes released on Amazon Kindle Unlimited. You can, of course, get the stories from Amazon, but if you are a cheapskate, you can find all the stories I talked about online via various means like a special library with the books, or through a site that catalogs web novels, similar to how Novel Planet was back in the day. Considering how it took this long to just to get through what I read a bit over on Royal Road, I'm going to have to speed things up if I don't want this to become my longest video to date, so I'm going to have to speedrun the manga I read this year. Time Stop Hero is probably one of my favorite manga isekais due to the MC alone, who is just completely shameless about his behavior in a way that's endearing. Couple that with a story that's actually good, pretty decent art, and comedy that hits well at times, I personally give it a 9 out of 10, which is a rare score for isekai that ha have a strong etchy aspect to ever hit. I know this pretty well because at the beginning of this year I had an itch to check out what adult slash etchy isekai there were manga-wise to see if there was anything really good. The answer was not really. Ass. Mediocre. Collection of short stories involving women with big tits. Mediocre with a couple of somewhat decent isekai ideas. Mediocre, but is slightly self-aware that it's mid. Has a couple of meme panels, nothing else of note. One shot that really has nothing but a bit of fluff and comedy. Decent short manga that you could get through in about an hour. Give it a go. Mediocre and eye-rollingly stupid. Mediocre, but aims for big tit lovers. Passable completed story. Passable, and probably as destination for anyone who enjoys MILFs. Passable due to its top tier female character design and overall good art, which coupled with its dramatic edgy fights and plotting makes it a good popcorn isekai that you can turn your brain off to. Another small itch I had was searching for reverse moral stories, which to be honest, there aren't nearly enough. There are some, however. Six chapters so far, so it's still in its infancy, but it has great art and character designs along with enjoyable characters that puts a smile on one's face. 
decent chunks of chapters so far. The art isn't as good as the previous manga, but it isn't bad, just a bit less effort. But it can certainly still make the cut for enjoyment for me, with the emphasis placed quite a lot on the character dynamics of which this story does not fail at. Overall, what say to check out? Probably the most well-known example of this niche genre, and it slaps. It's one of the few stories I rate a 10 out of 10, and for good reason. The only complaint I have about this manga is that it does not get anywhere near enough chapters coming out which is a fucking travesty and a half. The actual summary of this manga is that a girl gets isekai transported to another modern world, but one where the social dynamics of men and women are swapped, so women act rowdy with men being mainly tame. It usually focuses on her, but it does switch focus to other characters at times as well. Has top tier comedic moments, highly recommend. That's all of those, at least for manga. Moving on into rapid fire mode again. Dog shit. I read 20 chapters of it, and it felt like a schizophrenic fever dream with how the plot progressed, which wasn't even interesting. You know that meme of that guy from American Dad looking at the gauge? Think of that, but instead it's on the verge between mid and ass. I am a hair's width away from dropping this 5.5 out of 10 manga, and I've only seen two chapters. Dropped, 5 out of 10, the art being the only noteworthy thing this time. It's decent, although the joke of the queen not getting that he's not insane seems like it might be staying around, which might shoot down the score of this manga, but I'm crossing my fingers that it doesn't overstay. It's decent, and it really seems like it will focus on keeping him single, which is a respectable way to stand out from the crowd, which tends to focus on hooking up the MCs with some love interest. Time will tell if it will stick to it, or if this is a story of him being slowly convinced to give love another go. It's fine, but I'll be honest, I don't remember it at all even after rereading a bit of it to check it out. Art is good, and some decent funny moments, nothing much besides that. Mediocre. Excessively grim derpy to the point of insufferableness. MC is a dumbass who just hands out modern random items you would find in a grocery store with impunity, and nobody questioning these packagings, etc. Add in quick forced romantic attachment. I dropped it to say the least. I usually have an issue with webtoons like this due to the fact that, when compared to manga, there is usually a waste of art space and a lack of plot progression that both annoy me and makes me dread the idea of having to wait years just to have any substantial amount of backlog building up only to get through it in maybe half a day. This is a thankful outlier to that. The plot, especially in later chapters, always feels like it's actually on pace, and with its art not being wasted on trivial non-details that don't help the webtoon as a whole. Combine that with a good story, characters, and fights, and you have a great, well-rounded Korea manga. Highly recommend. It's a fine reverse isekai, but it only has 5 chapters and hasn't updated in almost a year. Really meh, no idea how this was greenlit to begin with, but not surprised it was only one volume long. Really good completed reverse isekai, the art is good, the plot is enjoyable, the only detriment that I can remember is a bit of cringe-inducing moments that happen once or twice. A solid recommend for anyone looking for a drama-based reverse isekai. Decent isekai that has its funny moments at times, although it has gotten overdramatic with its plot in the newest chapters I read. Still give it a 7.5 out of 10. Good drama-focused isekai. Read this only a month or two ago, and I was surprised I didn't find this sooner. I went through 193 chapters, and I was still left wanting more. Definitely recommend for people of either genders. The only issue is that this definitely has the issue of not a lot of plot happening per chapter, so this may be something that I will come back to in another year or two after letting a lot more chapters build up. I didn't remember this until I remember the slight memory of the female love interest who is an arachne. There's only like 7 chapters and I read 5 of them almost 9 months ago, so update rate is pretty bad. Might want to put it off, but it does have the standout bit of being TRPG mechanic based. It's mid popcorn. Not bad enough to drop, but not enough for me to put it out of any sort of priority on keeping up with it has a decent chunk of chapters at least. This is what I call an observer's isekai pretending to be a reverse isekai. You think the story will be about a superhuman being among a mundane world, but no. Pretty quickly you are introduced to other characters and entities in the story that are basically superhuman as well. So if you are coming into expecting a serious story of supernatural meeting completely mundane, you will be disappointed. You can expect a pretty decent plot that connects the two worlds eventually. Mediocre, but has a decent chunk of officially translated chapters online. It's fine, but I'm personally turned off by the art style even though the plot and character interaction is pretty alright. Art is cool and the characters are cute, but the story and characters' believability is lacking and cliché. Fine for now, but I have a feeling it's going to get into the really cringy shock humor at his accomplishments sooner or later, along with ridiculous OP abilities that allow him to not worry about anyone coming to get him. 
find Isekai into a game that's taken very seriously and isn't just cheese walked. The issue is, yet again, the problem of both the art space being wasted where they could put more plot progression in them. In other words, there's not enough chapter and the plot could be advancing faster with no problem. Oh, they also slimmed down the muscle mommy barbarian girl, so don't get your hopes up if you are invested in the story partly due to her. Pretty decent isekai, has good art, plot, and characters. Like before, could do with using space more wisely, but the mystery aspect of the story gives a more engaging taste than the previous mention. Overall, I do recommend taking a look at this, or at least putting it on a planned read. Mid that's only kept from a drop by its somewhat interesting main plot point. Gender bent shit. If you are into that, you might like this. I'm not, so I do not care for it. Only read 5 chapters so far, but it's a cute manga with a likable female lead. If you want fluffy romance, this is probably it. I have to rate it a 6 out of 10, so a mid manga. Coupled that with the fact that I can't really remember anything from this despite the fact that I read ch 23 chapters from this doesn't bode well. My note on Annie List says it best. Art is below average, pacing is fast, filled with cringy Chinese manhwa tropes, bad translations, and the story's ass and unappealing. 4 out of 10, and dropped. Very generic and only thing of note is slightly romantic undertones. Mid, but could be dropped upon further reading. Nothing different than the average brain-dead overpowered protag, except with the see-through half-assed paint job of an old man. Avoid. This is a pretty unique setting when it comes to isekais on the Asian side of the market. It goes for a demon-esque underworld type of reality instead of the standard medieval style you see most stories aim for. Has a lot of tension, some good art, and enjoyable characters. This is actually one I would say to take a look at. Generic power fantasy where he's given OP powers right off the bat, along with an obvious romantic partner introduced as well. Dropped. Mid was the only saving grace being the cute girls. Everything else is ass. It's fine, but it has cringy narrator dialogue that nobody would actually be saying out loud as they play a video game, which breaks immersion at times. I'm going to be deadass honest. It just feels like someone was annoyed that there wasn't enough chapters coming out from the original reverse isekai Night on a Farm, and decided to make a clone just so there's more. The real difference is the art is better, but it might not go down the path of exposing to the government her existence. And the original one is of course going strong. It's a fine manga that, while has an actual long-term plot, is held back by its very mid-art style. The main draw of this reverse isekai is its actual attempt at having a wider world impact due to the arrival of this new person in a serious regard, even if it can be glossed over at times, as opposed to other reverse isekais which tend to ignore any politics or government involvement at all. That one observer's isekai from the same author of Konosuba is still going relatively well. Character designs are good, comedy is great, and the plot is decent. If you like Konosuba, you probably will like this. Mid. It's fine. The main standout is that it has more pages than the average manga. Decent from what little I remember, main draw is that the MC is somewhat clever with his use of powers at times and that he isn't just bulldozing the opposition. Some relatively unique character designs as well. A completed 5 volume isekai that has amazing art and really good character interaction and romance. This is officially translated though, so either you pay out 7 C's for their manga, or you pirate it. Whichever one you choose, prepare to settle down for a nice, relaxing story. Drop due to genericness and lack of seriousness. It's fine, the story plot is good, but the MC is kind of insufferable at times with his broody, angsty outlook. Has a lot of chapters at least. Fine, but the update rate is ass and the art is mid. Probably better spending your time reading something else. Barely passable. I was highly disappointed when it got into the manga, expecting a realistic attempt at showing what would happen if a fantasy medieval world got the ability to do social media. Only for them to have the laziest bullshit imaginable by writing it so only the MC has the ability to really do it, and for the story to just be about people going yandere over someone's voice. Literally easy mode standard BS, internet cheat, power cheat, farming cheat, and doesn't even really show actual sex scenes. Garbage. Bad translation and generic as shit. Just a barely passable hentai tier manga. Read it if you just want mainly mindless porn, I guess. Still fucking rocks. Only seven more chapters need to be translated. The art is amazing. The various different unique species and people who are drawn in this manga are incredible. Overall an awesome experience. If you want a food manga with an isekai spin, this is your go-to. Do not let this stay under your radar. In two chapters, it has not really done anything to make me want to come back to it. Just passable. 
The art is mid, but the dynamic of him trying to take care of his adopted kids is cute enough to make this a decent manga. Good art and good plot, I would recommend checking this one out. Season 1 is completed, although the season end is a bit of a random stopping point to be honest. It's decent, but there's also nothing super special about it. If you're the type who likes laid back stuff with cute girls, give this a go, otherwise you might want to pass on it. Absolutely mid, and also hasn't been updated in a year, so it's a pass from me. Another one where I surprisingly have a lower score than average. I personally thought this manga was mid, and it being a kind of brain turn off popcorn type story. If you are looking for a manga that's completed and focuses on a femme MC, then sure, give this a go. But don't expect any real seriousness in the story. This was a good manga, nice art, characters, plot, etc. Unfortunately, it was cancelled. If I had to say anything, perhaps it would be best to wait until the light novels are actually being translated before picking up this series in general. Until then, perhaps a perpetual plan to read status. Mid. I'm not surprised it hasn't had the rest of its chapters translated, even though they are one page long. Reverse isekai that pulls- Oh, actually, there was magical shenanigans going on in the real world. Basically a lot of mindless action. I found it to be mid and dropped it, but perhaps if you are looking for a more action-based reverse isekai, there's something for you. Still a pretty good decent food isekai, and also the only isekai that I know of that actually has its own J-drama, which is a decent watch if you're willing to handle some of the wacky over-the-top acting in it. Has a lot of chapters as well, so expect a solid day or two of time worth of content. It's probably one of the best, if not the best cooking isekai manga out there in general. A solid recommend. It's kind of mid. The art is just fine, the update rate is slow, and the plot is kind of meh. If you are really into slow life stuff then maybe, otherwise probably better spending your time somewhere else. I generally don't like cheat isekai guys due to how boring it makes everything, but this is one of those that still manages to be decent. Its strongest point is probably the background art, followed by most of the character and world design. Probably one of the best examples that show the Japanese market has no goddamn taste. This pretty nice manga got axed and only has 21 chapters, but it deserved to go on far longer. One of the few examples of a Japanese isekai where the protagonist has no special abilities whatsoever or ridiculous memorized knowledge that 99% of the population would never know. Check it out. This manga and anime is probably one of my favorite isekais from the Japanese market, period. For the anime specifically, there is almost nothing bad you can say about the adaptation, except for the production difficulties that happened during that caused it to be delayed a couple of times. A solid banger of an anime. As for the manga, it hits the exact same and it always leaves me wanting more. Cannot recommend enough. The art is kind of meh usually, but I personally feel like the specific world building and plot make up for it. The training and improvement of the MC's party members feels legitimate. Also has a decent chunk of chapters. Mid. Fine, but probably off-putting to some due to the premise. Mediocre, but it has a somewhat serious plot that helps it a bit in its ranking. The shoujo art style that screams Fujoshi power. You know the gender of the author without looking at their bio. The story itself is actually kind of funny. 8 out of 10. I'm going to keep reading it. I'm not gay, I swear. It's a decent manga that focuses on D&D mechanics with a somewhat tension-filled plot with an MC that focuses on being clever most of the time instead of being able to bulldoze his way through. Overall fine, the art is pretty good, especially some of the background shots. The plot mystery itself is kind of eh, although the MC interacting with the others is also funny at times. Most of the manga that I read almost a year ago I straight up remembered little to nothing about when it came to writing the script. This was an exception. This is a great manga that focuses on both the MC being an inventor, but also dealing with personal drama involving her close associates. Add on top of it pretty art, especially background shots, and overall it's a solid pick. It has 20 chapters officially translated so far. The Minecraft isekai is still going strong, baby. Good art and well-placed plot, along with cute girls and some handsome guys, makes this a very enjoyable manga to read, with the MC's cheat powers being done and shown in a way that's never really boring. Overall, a solid recommend if you are looking for a crafting cheat isekai with a slight porn focus. It's decent, but there isn't that many chapters for it, only 11 at least officially translated as of now. Maybe check back in on it later. Completed reverse isekai reincarnation romance drama, pretty decent solid read, would be a nice thing to spend a day reading if you like. Art and plot is good. Mid. Fine, but only 4 chapters out so we have no idea of the quality long term. Also fine, and has 47 chapters out as of now, although the release rate is kind of ass. Seems to currently be building up to having to answer to why he's acting the way he is. 
decent completed manga that ends off at a nice point. However, the light novel goes further, so you could read this, and then decide whether you want to continue on with the light novel. The Korean manga is fine and completed, unfortunately it tells you to go read the web novel. The problem is that the web novel isn't being translated, so if you read this and got invested, you will be blue-balled as the original web novel is both not being translated and also behind a paywall on the original website. So it's debatable at best whether you should spend your time getting into this manga just to be forced to stop. And finally, the last manga into Asian media in general I read this year. This manga's art is hands down amazing, some of the highest quality art, if not the highest quality among the lineup that I listed so far this year. On top of that, the plot and world building so far is great. As of now, I would say this personally ranks one of the best isekai mangas I've read this year. The only main detriment that I could think of is that due to the nature of it being about a doctor, it does have a tendency to info dump paragraphs about various diseases and afflictions. But if you are okay with that and want a decent non-cheap version of a doctor helping in a fantasy world, this is your go-to. Taking a breather for a second, let's pause and reflect on how shit Forspoken was, and how to have it was an actual crime for it to be the first AAA isekai game in modern times. Alright, second is over. We still have what isekai I read from the fanfiction sites like FF, QQ, AO3, and Space Battles to get through. Getting through fanfiction.net first, I read a handful of new stories out there and kept up with others. First up is Dragons Are Just Bigger Swallows, a semi-cracky fic where Sasaki Kojiro is isekai'd into Ruby. Do I recommend it? Eh, if you're a big Fate fan, sure, it's completed. Oh, and that will be a recurring trend. I have a love for Fate, and it's the thing I mainly keep up with seeing any new stories that are over 60k words. Miss Kobayashi Mage's neighbor is Shiro isekai'd into Dragon Maid, it's kind of mid to barely decent in quality of writing. It shows Mundatorum's early writing, which is a bit jank. Is it wrong to go into a dungeon with my wife? Is a Morgan X Bell fic. It's decent. Lyrical Sword and a fake Familiar Reborn are two isekai crossovers, with Shiro going to Madoka Magica and Archer heading into DXD. I'll be honest, they are both meh, and only those who are diehard fate tards with low standards should bother. The new staff of Beacon Academy is a Jekyll and Mr. Hyde set into Ruby, and it's also a missed story that I would be hard pressed to recommend. Breaking the Cycle is a MGESI isekai that I would say is actually pretty decent, 7 or 8 out of 10. It's an oasis in a desert of good long MGE content. That's all for new stories I got in on FF. Now, as for stories I'm continuing, first off, we have conflicting ideals. A Shiro, notice a common pattern, in My Hero Academia. I'll be honest, I find the plot meh, and I'm half considering whether to drop it. I would much rather choose to promote the other main Shiro in MHA fic, which is my ideal academia, where the writing and character interaction is more enjoyable. Hereafter is a Taylor and FGO isekai fic that I've been following for two years now that's probably one of my top three favorite fanfictions ongoing and is one of the few solid recommendations I would give to even a non-fate fan. It has amazing writing, a ton of content, and even has moderately different singularities with original servants. So it also appeals to FGO fans who may not want a one-by-one -one rehash of the original game's story. Overall, an amazing story. The Huntsman of Red is a Archer into Ruby fic, one that I would say decent, although the update rate that's due to the author juggling several stories at once is quite unappealing. Wormhole is another MGE story, one that's an Observer's Isekai at that. It's pretty decent, and it essentially finished its first season, so you can binge it now and have a more or less completed story even if the author drops dead before returning. Fate Azure Destiny is a Ritsuka into Azure Lane that has been pretty good writing, but unfortunately suffers from the dreaded lack of updates. S Salvation is another Shiro in Nier this time. The writing is decent, but it also suffers from lack of updates. I Return from my otherworldly adventures with troubles as expected is Hachiman returning from Danmachi, with a couple of tagalongs following closely behind. Writing is decent, but yet again, slow updates. Azure Lane Warship Gunner was a story I kept up with for a bit before being forced to drop it due to it being filtered by insufferable MC and the shoddy writing. Ruby Reacts to Fate series, Fate Zero, is meh at best, but even that score is in of itself commendable as most reacts are usually actually unbearable to read. Suffers from update issues. Monsters on Earth is a reverse isekai MGE worlds to collide type of deal, one that actually tries to do the politics and shenanigans of how that would play out. Unfortunately, the update rate is atrocious and the size of the content is salad levels alongside with passable grammar itself. I do hope that someone takes up the author's offer of taking it off their hands so it can at least be continued in some more frequent fashion. Another story that I read from FF is Multiversity, 
which had a chapter uploaded this year. TLDR, it's a multiversal isekai brawl of various characters from different franchises. I can't really recommend it in good faith due to being subject to the curse of mega crossovers almost never finishing, and its update rate as of now being atrocious. The rebirth of a sword hero is a cross between shield hero and archer. Dropped it about 50k words in because it was getting worse and cringier. The lost hero of Caldea was the last fic that I've read from FF, one that I dropped 7k words in due to it feeling too robotic. I wouldn't recommend if you find any of these stories interesting to probably check if they're on other sites instead. FF had an issue with email notifications that lasted a month that only on the 15th of November got fixed, and who knows if they managed to break their site again. Next up, space battles. A man rants at a camera for hours on end, a near automata, not quite SI, an isekai, but the MC doesn't know it and just assumes it is actually just a wacky future. It's pretty good, but it hasn't been updated in almost a year. But the author is still alive, and active as I type this script, so I assume it isn't a complete lost cause to get into. Demon in Fodlin, probably my favorite ongoing fanfiction at the moment, is an isekai of Gatia into Fodlin. Absolutely peak, and unlike Mundatorum's other works, from what I remember, didn't suffer rocky bumps due to writing growing pains. Highly recommend for anyone. A Wandering Soul is a multi-cross story with a character who has a handful of powers. The writing is fine, but the update rate is meh. I woke up as a dungeon, now what? Is a tailored turned into Dungeon Core original story. It's pretty good, but the update rate strikes again. Imposter Syndrome is a friend insert made by one of the Cabal's members. It's active and is good as well. Four Heroes Walk Into an Adventure is basically the MCs from Fate's popular series put together as a ragtag team. It's good, and while the update rate could be better, it's not too bad compared to the others. H-U-N-G-E-R is a Kankol SI that, while has decent writing, hasn't updated in seven months. This was easier on the tabletop is yet another example of a good story that just suffers from abysmal update rate. I would say to check it out if you find the idea of a Battletech SI interesting. I wasn't into Battletech at all, still aren't, but this was highly enjoyable. Wayward Wolf is Geralt in A Song of Ice and Fire. It's good. The quest for reconstruction is a good Claptrap SI, and yet again, non-existent update rate. Continuation of the End is a kind of past-life crossover isekai of Worm and Fate. Decent, but the updates. Only Human is a good Nikkei SI, although he doesn't know of Nikkei, yet another one of the Cabals that's also picked up some steam recently with several updates coming out. What Was Created by God is a Percy Jackson and FGO cross where Percy is sent into the fifth Lost Belt. It's also pretty good. A Brocktonite Yankee in Queen Marika's Court is another really good isekai with Taylor from Worm pooped into Elden Ring. It's currently on hiatus, but the author plans to come back eventually, so you won't be doing yourself a disservice by getting into it. It started with a nightmare as a Gundam SI that I won't waste my time explaining since there's a good chance the author will never come back to it. My Otherworldly Adventure is a Disaster, as I expected, is another fine Hachiman x Danmachi isekai. The authors really need to find more ideas than these two specific series, I swear. Update rate is horrendous. Again, Sokyo Transmission is a rare Toho SI fic of decent length. Updates occasionally and has a decent, slow-paced plot that generally focuses on people around Gensokyo. Avenging Class is a mysterious hero and X from Fate crossover into Marvel. It's pretty good and has a lot of content. I would say it's good for anyone. Fate, Souls, and Singularities is the last of my top three ongoing fanfictions that I'm currently enjoying. Basically, what it says on the tin. Dark Souls characters crossed into FGO. The start was a bit rocky, but it gets into the groove eventually and it's now something I always read a new chapter of. Just like with Hereafter, there's changed singularities and even a couple of new ones outright. I am literally dying in anticipation when the Holy Grail live event happens and the inevitable comedy that will come when various Dark Soul characters are forced to act as idols. But unfortunately, that's still a good two or three years off at this rate. I may need to use physical intimidation to help speed up Munda because I don't think I can wait that damn long. Fleet of the Homeward Bound is basically multi-cross sci-fi ships turned into ship girls. The main plus of it is its comedic interactions. Update rate is kind of ass. Apocalypse Reborn, Fantasy RTS Reincarnation, is a story that I've kind of not kept up with, due to the fact that the MC is just a clone of Hachiman, and it feels like this original story that the author made is just him rehashing a lot of things he did with his prior Hachiman fic. Haven't dropped it yet, but I wouldn't recommend it personally. A certain interdimensional civics teacher is a isekai friend insert into Magical Index. Overall, it's pretty damn good, a solid read. Roasting People Isn't a Fire Quirk is a Hans Andersen put into MHA. 
It's decent, though I hesitate to say I would recommend it to anyone but a big Fate fan. For it is in passing that we achieve immortality as a decent John from Ruby inserted into Fate King Arthur Britain. The only caveat being it hasn't had an update in three months. Telling Tales is a FGO SI, can't remember its quality so assumed it just fine, also written by a member of the Cabal. While it's currently on hiatus, it's probably a safe bet to assume he will come back to it eventually. Eventually being the key word here. My Big Brother is Possibly from Another Dimension by Missy Byron is a worm story from the perspective of a sister of an isekai in a journal format usually. It's pretty decent. Skill Thieves, Canvas, The Color of Another World is an original isekai story about a painter who's sent into this world with the power to capture the abilities of what he paints. It's also decent. The reveal of how his powers work is pretty good. Age of Will Early Access was a FGO OC isekai that I dropped due to not liking evil MCs. The New Man is a cyberpunk edgerunners fic, and I dropped it due to also having an evil MC. Finally, Aeonian Flame is a multicross that I decided to pass on due to it not seeming interesting in 5k words in. That caps off space battles, and oh my goodness gracious, speech in minutes is giving me a concerning number. I'll take off a bit of the time and also save myself from having to be too open about my deviancy by summarizing questionable questing. Essentially, most of the stories I took a look at on QQ over the year, which granted weren't that many, I dropped a chapter or a few chapters in because they were boring or ass, and there's only really a couple of any note to talk about. First and most of note would be Exodus, a book that's part of a series involving a space pilot who gets his memories transplanted into a slave boy who starts worming his way into more power and safety. Overall, it's a really great story, both with good plot and smut. It's also cross-posted on Scribble Hub as well. Probably one of the few decent stories on that site. Monster Girl Invasion, unfortunately I'm not a hero, and Monsters and Miracles are various different Monster Girl encyclopedia. The first is basically a better version of a reverse isekai world cross than the FF fic counterpart, but it is held back due to being hosted on QQ, which forbids any real in-depth glance on how politics and etc. would be impacted. The second is a Hachiman transplanted into MGE-inspired world, which goes hard as fuck. It started on space battles, then moved to QQ so that they could do smut, and is essentially completed more or less with some additional commission smut happening. The last is a group of friends inserted into a MGE light world as well. Unfortunately, both Monsters and Miracles and MGI suffer from audacious update rates. Those are pretty much the only stories I want to share legitimately. Everything else is either ass or guilty pleasures that are best kept to oneself. That's all for QQ. Oh, I technically did try an isekai from Wattpad called the mob character shouldn't have a yandere harem. I got through 6600 words before I couldn't stand it anymore. It's comically dog shit, which fits for the average model on Wattpad in general. Even ff.net has better average writing than this shit. I have no idea how this site even remotely stays popular. Last but not least, AO3, Archive of Our Own. Oh boy, probably my favorite reading site hands down due to both the specific filtering abilities the anything goes for the most part rules, and the best dark mode out of all the reading websites. There was a decent chunk of stories that I dropped on AO3, and I really don't feel like listing them off one by one. The short of it is I dropped them due to either dogshit writing or cringe overloading, usually both. I mainly read FGO stories, general stories with the tag Yisekai, and a bit of a look at stories also with the tag self-insert. I almost always only read stories with 60k words or higher, so to cut down on hiatus probability and because I like content, not small snacks of stories. Fate Break of Dawn is a story that, while currently on hiatus due to author IRL issues, is probably one of the best written fate fictions in general that I've read. TLDR Archer is summoned in a new timeline where he has an Artoria lookalike as his master. Goes up against Skaha. Pretty damn good. And I really hope it comes back sometime soon. The Sue's Curse is an ongoing story that's essentially a metafiction, as you can see from the summary. It's decent, though it is on my lower end of what I would recommend. If you like meta writing, give it a go, otherwise potential plant will read later. We Dance Through Fire and Ice and Heroes of Men are sibling stories of essentially a mishap, which leaves several servants in the land of A Song of Ice and Fire, and Emmy is assigned to retrieve them all. It's pretty damn good, maybe my number 4 favorite ongoing fanfiction at the moment. I'm not a fan of A Song of Ice and Fire, never read it or watched the popular TV show, but the stories are done well enough for me to enjoy it regardless, which is a sign of a good fanfic, one that is able to get you interested in new medias. Those Who Can't Teach is, unfortunately at the moment, a on hiatus fic that I read in the middle of this year and didn't notice it was already on hiatus until after I read it. 
The brief summary is, a guy with no abilities is isekai and has to do odd jobs, which is exactly my jam. Weak MCs stay weak and have to actually just be smart and tactful about what they do. The only good news is that I can affirm the author being alive as of two months ago, so it's not completely out of the realm that it gets continued once more. Fate, Crusade at Void's End is a fic with Louise insert into FGO as a master. It's decent, but it has its shortcomings like occasional grammar issues and straightforward rendition of the singularities that would have had me recommend other novels to Fate fans before this one. Shattered Assumptions is a ruby thick I was recommended that I'm meh on continuing. It had a really dogshit starting chapter, but the chapters after that were actually somewhat decent. Although I felt my interest waning up to chapter 14 when I decided to read other stories, I never got back around to reading it, and I'm split on whether to bother continuing it or not. Overall, can't recommend either way. Aberration is a Fire Emblem SI that is pretty damn good, probably one of the higher quality works I've read, period. It's completed, and it also has a sequel which is a part of a series which I've also started reading a bit called Equinox. Overall, a really solid recommend if you have a few days to spare. I did not regret it a single bit. Messianic Oration is a Genshin SI that's part of a small niche of fiction called SAGAU, which is just the characters in Genshin noticing the actions of the player for the most part. For the most part, most of the stories are also ass to an astonishing degree. This is one of the only couple of exceptions. I would say it's a decent read, one that I'm keeping up with. The other notable one is To Believe in a God is to Die Without Ambition, which is also pretty good, and is one I'm purposely keeping up to date with. I would say both of these stories have actually decent writing too, so don't be afraid to give them a shot. There's a handful of stories which either only have a few chapters, or I've only read a few chapters of, so I don't have a strong conclusion on whether I will continue or not. They are To the Age of Gods, Weirda Sundavar, Where the Fuck Am I, Mon Musu Isekai, Final Fantasy VII Code Radiant, Help, I Got Pulled Into a Video Game to Become a So-Called World Guardian, and New Reality. I would say only 1, 3, and 6 are likely to stay, but I'll give the other three more of a kick before ultimately deciding. The Elder Scrolls Skyrim Dragon Bard Edition, the only story on this list that's actually locked out of viewing for non-AO3 members, is a decently written story, at least for 8 chapters so far, but one I might drop due to its use of song lyrics which I personally don't feel work well in writing a lot of the time, and especially here. If you are someone who is more okay with that, and also like female MCs, this might be a solid read for you. Grim Sarcasm is also another one I might be adding to the dropped pile but haven't finalized it yet. It kind of has this slightly cracky feeling to it that I personally don't like, but different strokes for different folks. There Are Monsters in My House is a complete MGQ reverse isekai. To be bluntly objective, it does have a couple of cringy moments, but the rest of it is decent. And with the absolute lack of stories when it comes to the reverse isekai market, I'll take what I can get, especially if it's with the OG classic girls from Monster Girl Quest. If you're a fan of the game, you're automatically required to read it. Summoning a Little Mischief is a small completed furry isekai smut. It's decent, read it if you want. Ruby and R is basically Ritsuko with servant cards in Ruby. It's good. She Who Wields the Holy Sword is Artoria in Worm curb stomping a lot of shit. It's decent, but I would hesitate to wreck unless you're a fate tard and have read most other fate stuff already. A Crash Course in Monster Hunting is basically the protagonist from Bloodborne, Fallout New Vegas, Final Fantasy, and Monster Hunter in teams of duo where one side is nutcase central and the other is likable heroes. I personally find it just fine, as I like the plot involving the FF and MH duo far more compared to the other two, which means I'm torn on liking and disliking the story as a whole. It's decently written though, so it's not a bad gen recommendation to get a feel of it. Lord of Swords is an on-hiatus story where Shiro is in the general Percy Jackson universe. It's decent, but I would wait to see it actually return before trying it out. An Archer's Promise is another story by Nim the Writer, and to be quite honest, it kind of matches the rest of his work's quality, which is meh. Personally, this story was actually decent in the beginning, but more recently, it's kind of gone downhill a bit in quality once Smut was introduced. Can't recommend even for Fate fans unless you have nothing better. Changing Breeze is a body-swapping isekai involving FGO and Genshin. It's fine, but nothing more as of now. A new route is something I recently discovered which was that DDLC has fanfiction, which really shouldn't be a surprise, but I stumbled across this in my search for Isekai SIs. It's pretty good at the moment, don't really have any complaints about it. If you aren't automatically turned off by DDLC, perhaps give this a check. Daily Life of a Lilum is a reverse Isekai involving a socially maladjusted man with this Lilum who summoned herself. 
It's fine, but I personally find the MC too off-putting to put it any higher. Next is Shattered Through Time, at Arknight's SI. It's meh due to kind of eye-rolling spineless and anime behavior of the MC, so I wouldn't wreck it. Hyperdementia Neptunia, Welcome to Our Dimension, is something I stumbled across, which also, coincidentally, is the reason how I learned about fanfiction.net's email issues, because they were cross-posting it onto AO3 due to it. The story is fine for the most part, with the only part I cringed at being him coming mostly clean about his origins. If you've seen enough isekai where the main character has to come clean about coming from another world, and how cringy that dialogue often is, you'll know. Fool with the Death Wish is John from apparently post volume 8, basically being an alcoholic sad dump of a person in Genshin. The Ruby team has also arrived, but they keep missing him as of now. The story is fine, but I'm waiting for a backlog instead of being continually teased on the inevitable drama. Between Sun and Sand is an MGE inspired story where the MC basically has to deal with aggressive women. Forewarning though, it does incorporate Futanari like halfway in, which caught me off guard, but considering it's the only MGE story of decent length that's consistently updating every week, I decided to suck it up, no pun intended. The story writing is pretty damn good, and the author intends on finishing the story sometime in the relative near future as well. Cleveland Quixotic is an isekai that does have some aspects of a reverse isekai later in the story, involving a sociopathic MC named Jay. It's completed, and it's a pretty decent action-packed story if you are into that. Overall, a decent read. Last but not least, I have Beyond World. This was the only fanfiction involving recreators, one of my favorite reverse isekais, period. I have to admit, I was expecting cringy failure upon seeing not only that this was the only long fic of recreators, but that this was the first fic from the offer. I decided to still take the dive because it was still a completed crossover with Fate, with Archer as its main character. The only thing I have to say is, the gods have graced us with this absolute banger. Holy fuck. I binged this all in one go, and by the gods, this gave me fix of recreators that I've been dying for almost six years now. Someone call Garnt that popcorn action isekai addicted monkey and tell his ass to meditate on this fic if he hasn't already. Knowing how he also loves recreators and fate, he can't pass this up, my lord almighty. This was unironically one of the best things I did not expect to read this whole year, and I thank the lord I decided to look in the past completed fate fix to find this gem. A absolute must read for any fate fan, and I think I still wreck the fic in general, even if you aren't knowledgeable of either series. Now, that wraps things up. For the most part. I also keep up to date with my favorite isekai of all time, favorite story of all, The Wandering Inn, which, as I type this, is doing its volume finale, which finally exposes the true threat to the world at large, or at least to Israel powers, which is immensely hype. I also watch the show that could be in a sense be categorized as an isekai, Scavenger's Reign. The speculative evolution in it is mainly good, albeit some eye rolling magic tier stuff. The plot, not so much. Besides that, there's nothing more I've seen, at least nothing more I would share. Apologies for that one person who asked me on my last video to check out Mashoku Tensei. I keep putting it off due to both me not really bothering with Asian web novel slash light novel right now, and my negative expectation that it's been overhyped by any only goldfish, and have spent all my time reading other stuff. I am going to have to read or watch it next year, just so I can finally put it to rest, along with some other old like light novels of mine that I've just haven't kept up with, like Cooking with Wild Game and The Ideal Sponger Life. Speaking of those, while I gave a decent chunk of names of stuff I read this year that I recommend, there is also stuff that I haven't read at all this year, whether due to the stories being completed, or due to me just not staying up to date with them that I also recommend. Rumble Circuit, My Children from Another World, The Way Ahead, Delve, Dungeon Item Shop, Tien, a lit RPG cultivation isekai, of Men and Dragons, Hunter or Huntress, Arkendrathist, there is no epic loot here, only puns, Cat Girl in the Pantry, and epilogue are all various English original stories that, while I haven't kept up with or are completed, I know are decent recommendations. Of the Asian side, we have for manga Saihate no Paladin, No Longer Human, In Another World, Trinity Wonder, Her Summon, and El Sanwa Yasaraninai. For anime, there is Log Horizon, Konosuba, Recreators, Drifters, Devil is a Part Timer, Problem Children, Gargantia on the Verdius Planet, and Isekai Shokudo. Release That Witch, Cooking with Wild Game, and The Ideal Sponger Life are some web novels and light novel ones. There is more niche recommendations I could give that I did give last year, but well, this is already long enough, isn't it? 
that's a good roundup more or less of both what I enjoyed this year and a solid recommendation list of my current tastes, one that will be below in the comments. Ten years have gone by, and while my tastes have evolved, I am still going strong and enjoying isekai. Although there could definitely stand to be improvements, so to speak, when it comes to isekai in general. There needs to be more reverse isekai, especially ones that seek to actually explore political ramifications of worlds colliding, so to speak, or at least ones that explore it well. There needs to be more isekai in general that actually get more creative with their worlds instead of leaning on the boring crutch of a standard medieval world, or god forbid, the brain cell reducing generic Dragon Quest JRPG world. God forbid there be more isekais being creative, maybe a world composed of mostly water with the protagonist mainly interacting with aquatic sapiens, as just one example. Or maybe more observer's isekai, with something more than just sci-fi characters goes to generic fantasy world. Hell, even just flipping it would be more interesting. The fact I have to resort to self-inserts just to get an isekai that actually stands out from generic fantasy is not really a sign of the market filling a niche. Don't even get me started on the issues of a lot of isekais to try and force power-seeking actions instead of keeping a character at their same place and just have them actually be smart and social instead. Not to mention the issues of reverse isekais not really being tagged anywhere, much less observer isekais. The field has much to improve on, but on the other hand, that means there's still a lot more stories that can be done to keep things interesting. I'm personally fiddling with the idea of making some fanfic about an SI or OC in FGO who's a staff member and the main plot is him being antisocial and avoiding tripping up any precognitive BS, just to capitalize on that underused niche. But on the other hand, that would severely cut down on my time to read, and I already don't have enough time in the world to read all that I want. The issue of so many stories, but so few ones that aim specifically at niches that are rarely scratched. Perhaps with the inevitable rise of AI writing, this will become an issue of the past, but only time will tell. I hope you found some stories that you walk away interested in reading from my experience. Do let me know in the comments if you care about such a detailed overview of practically almost everything I read in a year isekai related going forward. Farewell and onwards to another 10 years.